Hello guys and welcome back to the How To Animate YouTube channel. My name is James and in today's video we're going to be continuing on with this animation. If you missed part 1 then I'll leave a link in the description, make sure you check that out. And don't forget to subscribe to be notified of future videos and if you find this video at all helpful please help the channel out by giving it a thumbs up. So let's get into it. So as you can see these are the key poses that I extracted from the reference footage. So what we're going to do now is start refining this. So the first thing I'm going to do is come out of step mode. So I'm going to select the whole character and shift select everything on the timeline and right click and go to linear. Okay, now we could go to spline, but it's always a good idea to come out of step mode into linear so you're not getting any extra overshoots. This will allow you to see if you need to add more in-betweens and everything like that. So let's give this a play and this is going to be really bad, okay? So as you can see it's really really rough, but that's fine. Whenever you come out of step mode this is what you're going to have, okay? But the advantage is the base is there, okay? We've got all the keys in place. We're going to go in and add some more in-betweens to define, especially this bit here. You see the way the javelin's pointing down? So we need to add another in-between here just to define that straight line of it coming through. I'm going to start by doing a quick timing pass, okay? As you can see, everything looks very samey and floaty at the moment and basically what we're going to do is start compressing some of these frames to get the right timings okay and this is just going to be a very rough timing pass so I'm just kind of feeling out what I think the right timing should be I think we're going to need a bit more on this anticipation here Okay, and then I'm going to really cut down on the amount of frames on the actual throw itself. So guys, I've gone ahead and done a timing pass. As you can see, it's starting to look a bit better now. I've also gone in and started fixing up the feet here. So I've gone in, and if you just look at the keys, I've gone in and keyed quite a bit on top of what we had. Um, really just defining the arcs of the feet here. Okay, I've also stretched out his foot at this point. Okay, so before it was very sort of spongy, but you want to make sure you get this this front leg nice and straight before the hips come down. Because it just adds a lot of weight. Okay, and I'm going to show you what I've done for the translate wire. Okay, this is still pretty rough. But you see we've got the basic um, bouncing ball kind of shape here. If you want to go back and watch my other video on the bouncing ball you'll see this is exactly what we was doing for that. The same principles apply here so don't neglect your bouncing balls because there's a lot of information you'll get from that that will help you when you start going on to full body stuff. Okay and I think it's time to do another timing pass okay because this this run up still feels very slow to me. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to do some experimentation with the timings, okay? I'm quite happy with the timing of the throw. Um, I still need to define this in between a bit more. So it's mainly just this run. So I'm just going to grab everything and speed it up a bit. Yeah, so already that feels a lot better. It's a very hard thing to build up your sense of timing okay it does take a little while um, you know when you're first starting out some may, some animators might have very floaty animation um, some animators you know might go the other way and it might be snappy and unclear exactly what's going on um, this stuff does take time guys so you know feel free to save your animation and just play with it, okay? Play with different timings, different feels, different tempos. It's almost like composing a bit of music, okay? It's you're trying to make stuff as clear as possible, okay? So everything has to have a certain pattern, okay? It's it's show the audience you're about to do something, do it, and then show them that you've done it, okay? And these three things 
always have different kind of timings okay and different ways of doing it so it's your job as an animator try and see the animation as if you've never seen it before as if you're an audience member would this read well okay if it was the first time you was ever viewing it what does it convey how does it read so don't be afraid to experiment with timings okay I want to speak a moment about exaggeration uh, one of my subscribers asked about exaggeration now exaggeration it always happens in animation okay it doesn't matter whether you're cleaning up mocap or you're doing a super cartoony animation okay when you clean up mocap you usually use anim animation layers to bump up poses to uh, strengthen stuff okay so what exaggeration is is trying to make it clearer to the audience or it's trying to find a way to make it more interesting okay so let's take this for example um, this in between here is very quick okay so this one here I'm talking about the moment he his weight starts to come around and he's got everything into this shoulder here now how far can we push this it's it's literally it's going to be called a smear frame okay so say we're doing you know something super cartoony um, well not even super cartoony I mean if you if you take a look at um, you know Disney films the the recent ones say um, you know Tangled if you've seen Tangled if you look at the the breakdown shots um, on YouTube of you know the animators speaking about them um, some of the frames in there are incredibly distorted okay they're smear frames and they happen so quick that you don't see them but you feel them okay and they they look very broken but once it's played in real time it looks great okay your, your eye picks up on it um, so for this you know how far can we push this pose here you know can we complete I mean obviously the skinning is going to be broken but even with the skin in, you know, completely broken, can I push it that far? You know, will it work? And you see, when I play at speed, it, it works. You know, you wouldn't think of it, but I mean, look how broken that looks. But when it's played at speed, you know, it's kind of, it just feels really nice. See that? get so much more energy so you know it it's up to the animator to find these little little things you know you can you can add smear frames in if you're clever about it if you know where to put it if you're building up all this energy here and this 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 bit lasts you know a fraction of a second so you know push stuff as far as it will go you know drag the character about find find something that's really crazy looking but does it work you know when you play it you know at 30 frames a second yeah it does look it works fine it looks cool you know it feels snappy okay so I'm quite happy with the start of this and the end is very messy okay and it's mostly in the arms which is quite a good thing because it allows me to talk to you about an animator's worst nightmare which is Eula <laughs> okay right pain in the butt now um, I think I've covered this slightly in my graph editor 2 tutorial but basically what Eula is is this okay um, if you was to go back and look at the stepped keys it didn't look as bad as this now have a look at the rotations it's getting really really confused about what I want it to do here okay but we won't blame the computer it doesn't quite understand it hasn't got enough information here to understand that I want a nice I want the arm to come round in a nice arc you know nice and smooth um, so when dealing with stuff like this a movement like this you can have a bit of a fight on your hand okay so the first thing we're going to do is select the area and in your graph editor go up to curves Euler filter okay and you'll see there it's tried to reorganize the rotations so they won't cross over okay and it's still not going to be perfect 
it's better than what it was but it's it's not what we're after okay so it's a case now of trying to define this kind of circle motion so we're gonna have to add more keyframes in in between okay, to define that arc coming round we've hit a Euler problem here as well <laughs> you see that see as you're editing you're just going to add more and more problems okay so keep running the Euler filter see the way it corrected it there okay and that's almost there okay probably want to keep this arm back at this point okay so we're starting to get the correct kind of circle there so yeah be warned guys especially if you're using fk arms you know for some movements you're gonna have a bit of a fight on your hands you know if you've got a character waving his arms like in in the air you know if he's flying through the air and waving his arms it can be a bit of a pain in the butt but this is the way to get around it keep running the eula filter okay and you're probably going to want a key like every like two or three frames just to define to the computer exactly that arc as it comes around so guys that brings us to the end of this video i really hope you found it helpful uh, in the next video we're going to take this through to final i'm going to show you some really cool stuff in the graph editor and teach you some stuff how to you know just get in there and polish it to a final state you know so it looks really nice if you found this helpful please help the channel out by giving us a thumbs up um, you know you can subscribe to be notified of the next video um, if you've got friends you know please share it you know uh, be great if we could get this channel to grow you know we're fast approaching 100 subscribers so that, let's try and get there um, really appreciate all the support you give and all the comments and stuff so yeah I'll see you in the next video thanks very much